Now you all know the Honda BRV, Honda seven seat SUV based on the Mobilio MPV based on the Brio Super Mini. But really, can you call a seven seater based on a Super Mini an SUV? Well, Honda has been wondering the same thing. So for the second generation BRV, they've taken things to a whole new level. Now the new BRV is longer, wider, taller, bigger, better, faster, stronger, everything. But that doesn't mean anything unless it's got more interior space. Does it? Let's find out. On the inside, things are much better. You've got a lot more headroom. You've got a lot more legroom. You've got more elbow room and you've even got armrests, a center armrest on the BRV. I've been waiting years for this thing. You also get better bucket seats. You've got better lateral support, better thigh support. You've got nice leatherette. You've also got the fabric ones, which are still nicer because of the extra bolstering. Now the old BRV, the interior was a massive improvement over the original Mobilio it was based on. But for this one, they took it a step further. They've made it feel more modular, more bespoke. In fact, it has sort of themes of Star Trek Next Generation, not the original series, in the way that these air vents are shaped. It feels very sporty. It feels very nice. And as a nod to modernity, you also have twin USB ports here, one of which feeds the head unit for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And you also have the 12 volt socket because let's face it, all MPVs and SUVs still need a 12 volt socket. So you've got three of them. You've got one here and another here and one back in the third row. Here in the second row, you also get tons of legroom, tons of headroom, overhead AC, reclining seats, Ooh, and an armrest that drops to just the right height. In the third row, however, you don't get much in the way of convenience at all. I mean, sure, you've got cup holders, sure, you've got that 12-volt socket, but then again, the room is the big headliner here. But it also poses a big problem. It makes this car 40 kilograms heavier than the old BRV. And to cope with that, Honda have made a lot of revisions to the mechanical package as well. Not only does the BRV sit and ride higher than before, the suspension mounts themselves sit one to two inches higher inside the body. This should give it a longer suspension stroke and better carrying capacity than the old car. In terms of the drivetrain, Honda doesn't claim any on-paper increase in power or torque. It's still 121 PS, about 119 horsepower, same as before, but they have made revisions. Now, the intake track has been smoothed out. It should give you smoother mid-range power delivery and revised engine mounts should make for less vibration and less noise inside the cabin. But does that hold true? Let's find out. On the road, you can certainly appreciate the improvements to the mechanical package of the BRV. You can feel the extra firmness and the extra surety in the damping. As you go over humps like this and roads like this, it does feel a little bit firmer, but you'd still have that give that absorbs harsh impacts. Handling seems like it's a lot better, but you know, we'll have to wait for a full test drive to actually find out how much better it is at highway speeds. In terms of safety, you've got the Honda sensing system, a safety net that helps novice and even experienced drivers to be safer on the road. It protects not only you, but the people around you. So for instance, we have this camera in front of the rear view mirror, which helps with the forward collision warning, which is a great help in the chaotic Manila traffic that they expect this car to drive in. Around town, this is pretty easy, pretty painless to drive. You've got a higher seating position, a higher riding position, and a more square front end. So it does feel semi SUV-ish, not the full SUV, not the full Monty. Now this is easy to see out of, but it's not tall enough or wide enough to be intimidating. In terms of power, you certainly feel that Honda could have added a little more, but it's adequate and the engine is nice and quiet, except of course when you pull out to overtake, no matter how much extra insulation, you can't really dull the roar of that older 1.5 liter engine. Not that you want to, it is an entertaining engine and it is the most powerful 1.5 in the class. 
but that still comes with a guarantee of Honda fuel economy. We don't expect it to be exactly as good as the old BRV, but we expect it to be in the same ballpark, which means obviously 20 plus kilometers a liter on the highway and double digits in the city, depending on how gently you drive. So that's the all new Honda BRV, a massive improvement both inside and out. This is actually a very pretty car. The new BRV looks like a fully globalized product. It's got that squared off European vibe that you might see on the HRV or the new CRV. Of course, with that global look comes a global price. For this VX variant, you can pay up to 1.39 million pesos, but that does come with Honda sensing and all the bells and whistles. If you don't want to spend that much, you can still get the V variant, or if you want to spend even less, there is an S variant that comes with a manual transmission. Yes, boys and girls, you can get a manual transmission with a BRV now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that should please fleet managers and fleet drivers everywhere. The new BRV is improved, it is better, it is the biggest in class, it is the most powerful in class, it is the most loaded in class. It should revolutionize the small seven segment much like the original BRV did when it launched many, many years ago.